Welcome to the Basics of Record Keeping. I'm Molly. And I'm Kavitha. And we're from the Rural Advancement Foundation International, RAFI for short. RAFI is a farm advocacy organization based in North Carolina. We work with farmers across the nation, but focus on folks in the Southeast, working towards financial sustainability of farm operations and businesses. And today we're going to talk to you about the basics of record keeping for applying for crop insurance. We're going to walk you through what you need to include in order to be eligible for crop insurance. And we break it down to five basic steps to get you going on your records. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Farm Service Agency and apply for a farm number. A farm number is basically how you register your farm with the government. It is free, it doesn't require you to sign up for any programs, and registration can let you be notified about which programs you do qualify for. All that's required of you is to come in with written proof of your connection to the land. This can be a formal lease, a deed, or even just a really basic written agreement. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And you do want to include um, indication of your crop plan, your enterprise budget, and any past yield information. So basically any information you have on your farm you can provide them. The next step is to get a field map of your operation. When you go to FSA and get your farm number, they'll include and give to you an aerial shot of your property. From there, we recommend adding a few extra pieces of information so that you can keep clear and smooth records for the remainder of your business. The first thing we recommend adding are field numbers. Field numbers will help you track where you're planting what crops as well as what kinds of conditions are available in different parts of the field. It'll help you kind of note down what parts of your operation are wet, are sandy, are moist, whatever the case may be. Second thing we recommend adding are wetlands. The FSA has some regulations around wetlands on your property and you're not allowed to necessarily cultivate those parts of your land for crops. So it's important to know where those are so that you don't touch them and, are, and remain eligible for federal programs. The third thing we recommend adding are water sources. This is pretty straightforward. Whether you are operating out of a stream, a well, city water, whatever the case may be, it's important to know where those water sources are coming from on your property because that will dictate the rest of where your crops can actually be irrigated and grown. Fourth thing that's really important, if you are an organic operation or a mixed operation, it's important to note down what parts of your land are organic versus what parts are conventional. A few other points that you can add, not as crucial, include row numbers, which is just a further delineation down from field numbers, buffers on your property, as well as contours. Contours will help you figure out what parts of your land are higher up, where the hills are, which way water is going to be running down or up on your property. Here's an example of a farm map. There are a few ways to go about creating a farm map. One, which is really simple, is to just work with the printout that you get from FSA and draw on top of it. If you want to do something a little bit different, you can also use a software on your computer like Word or Paint and draw on that. Additionally, you can keep it really simple and just draw on a sheet of paper with pen and pencil. If you do this particular way, the only things you need to keep in mind is that you have to be precise about the shape and size of your property. So step three, the third step for basics of record keeping is to understand what you want to track and get out of your records. There's multiple ways you can use these records to help inform your operation. So as you've mentioned, this video is about the basics of record keeping for crop insurance. So what we're mainly going to talk about in the following videos is how you establish price and yield for your operation. But there's other ways you can also track for your records. So if you want to go organic, let's say, you're going to want to track your inputs and think through how you're going to prove that those inputs are organic, along with the other rules and regulations that the USDA requires for organic operations. You can also track your cash flow. So if you want to look at your records from a business perspective, you can track your expenses, put this in a spreadsheet, and really understand where your expenses break down for your operation. As we mentioned, this video is focused on crop insurance records. Step four is how to make records for yield. The first thing that we would recommend that you keep track of are your planting and your harvesting dates. If you have a notebook on the dash of your truck, if you keep it with you in your back pocket, wherever it may be, it's really important that when you plant certain crops, you make a note of that, particularly where you've planted them and when. The second step of that is obviously to track when you harvest the stuff that you have planted. You can do this by making a note of either the container or the actual weight of your product. If you use bins for watermelons, for instance, you can track it by the bin. You can also track it by poundage if you're using greens or other sorts of crops. Also make sure to make a note of the general weather conditions for that year. You don't need to go into too much detail, but making a note of whether it was a dry year, a wet year, if there were particular conditions going on with your soil, those harvest records are a good place to put that information. 
Step five, the final step for this video, is making records for price. So regardless of where you sell your products, every time you sell a product, you're going to want to keep your records up to date. And ideally, you're going to want to have records that can be verified by a third party. What I mean by that is anyone who keeps records in addition to yours to really verify what you're saying in your records is super helpful. So if you keep a ledger of your own, every time you go to a farmer's market and you track each transaction you have with a customer and the price you sold that and the quantity, that's an excellent place to start. Even better, if the farmer's market themselves keep track of your sales data, you can have that as an additional way to verify your records. Um, another great way of doing this is if you have contracts with wholesalers, you can use their contract to also establish your own records and kind of help verify what you're saying. This is just always helpful in case crop research agents want to double check your records or if there's ever kind of a situation where there's an audit or anything of, those, of that nature. To be eligible for crop insurance, you have to have a farm number, a farm map, updated records on price, updated records on yield, and then in our next video, paper and electronic methods for record keeping, we're going to walk you through different ways that you can track both your price and your yield. Thank you for watching.